Oh, Lego, you forgot to title the video. What's going on there, man? No, I didn't. No, I did not forget to title this video because... What else is there to say? What else is there to say? Tell me in the comments. What else is there to say other than just... LOL. You know, I never say the word LOL out loud, but... I think just the connotation behind that one word kind of encapsulates everything I'm feeling towards this Canucks team. And if you're on Twitter, you have seen the meltdown. I tweeted about this earlier saying that it's kind of funny how Canucks Twitter seems like a lot more of a fun place to be when the team's actually doing so poorly compared to when they're actually winning. I saw a lot of people talk about this on Twitter. It's actually Maroki on defense, Brett, who tweeted it out first, and I was like, huh, he's kind of right. This is the worst we have felt about the Vancouver Canucks since 2014. 2014! That was the first year they were bad. Just pfft, bad, you know? Last year, they were in the playoffs. The year before that, in the playoffs. The year before that, in the playoffs, they went to the finals. But no, 2014... Boom, they're just so bad, it feels bad, the coach is bad, the team is bad, the GM gets fired, everybody gets fired, Luongo, Kessler, they all get traded. This Canucks team in 2021, it's given off those vibes, man. And I don't know why I'm smiling right now, I just kind of think that the madness, you know, the madness, how bad this feels, it's so invigorating because it's like, wow, we're actually capable of feeling so bad about a hockey team. And to those in the comments that are going to be like, oh, Lego, just jump ship, come on on the Habs fan base, man. No, nah, I can't do that. You know I love my Habs, but at the end of the day, Vancouver, my hometown city, it's always going to be number one in my heart, and there's nothing that I can do to change that. Even though they're so bad, they're so pitifully terrible that... Against Toronto, again, the second time in a row, they end up losing 5-1. to one. And it's like, oh, 5-1, to one. what's all too bad about a 5-1 to one loss? Teams lose 5-1 to one all the time. And if you're saying that you didn't watch this game, you didn't. This Vancouver Canucks team had everything go wrong against them. And when things looked like they were going to go right, oh, nope, sorry, man, it's offside. JT Miller, man, sorry. Speaking about JT Miller, there's a lot that we could talk about that guy. Oh, my goodness. But... When it comes to the Vancouver Canucks, it's just incredible. Let's go over some tweets here because I was on Twitter and looking at the fan base and taking a look at what people had to say throughout this entire game here. Here's a tweet from Harmon Dale, the boy genius himself. Take a look at what he says. It's one thing to lose games. It's an entirely different thing to get blown out and embarrassed almost every night. This is unacceptable. Unacceptable indeed, you know. The Canucks absolutely suck. And it's so funny because I'm like, yeah, I didn't think like four months ago I'd be saying that. Like four months ago, I thought this team would actually be pretty okay, pretty competitive. I thought they would have a chance to compete for top three in the division because on paper, the roster we had looked like it would be good. But no, we're getting the worst case scenario of that on paper thing because everybody on the team has just decided to stop playing well at the same time. Here's what Chris Faber said. Niels Hoaglander is the only player out there who gives a damn, and yeah, he's kind of right, you know? Hoaglander's out there, he's been probably the only bright spot on this team. Right now, if I, oh my gosh, if I screenshot what's happening on Twitter right now, take a look at this. The trending topics in Vancouver, Canucks at Maple Leafs, hashtag Fire Benning, and Hoaglander. Hoaglander's over here because everybody loves the guy. He is out there, he's hitting people, he's actually paying attention to what's going on in the ice and not just skating around Louis Erickson style. Kevin Bieksa kind of had a quote on the broadcast where he was like, yeah, what is your identity here? This Vancouver Canucks team is playing with such little heart that we can even ask and viably have a conversation about what this team's identity really is. And the fact that we can have a conversation and a debate about it just shows how little care seems to be out there when the Canucks play. Even Braden Holtby, the guy's out there giving the puck away. Sure, JT Miller on the back shot kind of leaves him out to dry, but you know, that's just kind of how it is when you're playing as the goaltender for the Vancouver Canucks. Whether it's Holtby or Demko, these guys letting in goals. Holtby honestly looked kind of off tonight, and you know, of course I can say that because he let in five goals, but again, this is what we talked about with Demko. In the previous game, Demko, even though he let in seven on 37 shots, he still was okay. Holtby today wasn't okay, like... It's just a combination of everything, you know? Oh, man. Are we taking for Hughes? Is that the thing now? 
I can't wait to see the day that the words Luke Hughes are going to be trending in Vancouver because you know it's going to be happening soon. You know it. People are going to start getting on this train here. And even though the 2021 draft is so inferior to the 2020 draft and even the 2022 draft, we're still in a spot, man, where this Canucks team, oh, they're bad. They're really bad. And I don't dismiss the idea that this team can go on another win streak sometime down the line. It's possible. It's definitely possible. We won three against Ottawa and then one against the Winnipeg Jets for a four-game winning streak before this calamity happened here. It's possible. Hockey's a game of inches. Small, small little fragments of space-time can dictate entire series and championships in hockey. It's possible for this team to come back and win. But in order for them to do that... They're really going to need to get their heads out of there. Yeah, you can fill in the blank right there. I can't believe how bad that was. Like, we haven't even gone over this team's game log or whatever, because I had notes the entire time. Wayne Simmons is really good. Two goals for him. Pedersen can't buy a goal. Even if he busts out his credit card and sends out all the numbers, he can't buy a goal. He's been so unlucky here. You had Matthews with several goals. One of them was a beautiful steal in front of JT Miller, which was very ugly to see. Chatfield had a play that led directly to a goal where Lettinen fed it over to Hyman from Marner in front. Yeah, that was very great. The Leafs power play was good. JT Miller got a goal, but it was called back because offside. Niels Hoaglander, the only light on this Vancouver Canucks team right now is the guy who is offside, which is kind of ironic when you think about it. The only guy to actually cheer for is the guy who takes the goal away. But this Canucks team, just with the giveaways, with the collapses, with the inabilities to convert offensively, and with the inabilities to actually maintain proper defensive pressure, yeah, it, it's bad. It's really, really bad. It's Michael Jackson bad levels up in here. So it's just been so funny seeing how the fan base was so positive after that first win against Edmonton. Myself included, I was really happy after that Edmonton victory first game of the year. I was like, yeah, this team's going to be good, man. Look at this Horvat, Besser, Pedersen, these guys doing their thing. But as the games went on in a tough Canadian division, we just saw more and more weaknesses being exposed time and time again. To the point where now Austin Matthews is the number one leading goal scorer in the NHL, taking over the reins of Tyler Toffoli, who was the number one goal scorer in the NHL before. What do these two have in common, aside from playing from teams that people in their respective fan bases love to hate against? Hey, they both got all of their goals against Vancouver. Okay, not all of them. Toffoli, almost all of them. Matthews, not even close to all of them. But a good chunk of their goals came against Vancouver, and the ones that put him top of the league were against Vancouver. So, so you know, it's just funny how this all goes down, how this team is just so inadequate to the point where they've lost four in a row now, and they've all looked like very, very inferior teams in those losses. Something's got to give, man. Whether that's a coach, a GM, a player, somebody who is here today should not be with the Vancouver Canucks organization. I don't want to say tomorrow. I don't think the Canucks have the audacity to make a move today and actually change things up for tomorrow. But let's give it a timeline. One month. One month from now, somebody on the Canucks today is not going to be on the Canucks. Not Taxi Squad, not AHL, not like that. I'm talking about, like, actually big changes. Somebody gets fired, somebody gets traded, something has got to give, and it's going to happen within the next month. Talk to me in the comments if you think we enjoyed this video. So that's for and I and I in Toronto. You guys are a good team. Don't get me wrong. You guys are great. And bye. <laughs>